I'm Ed. <clears throat> My talk today is on um, neurohacking, but um, particularly I'm going to be uh, talking about um, a way to hack a $50 toy to get pretty much medical grade EEG data. Um, I apologize, uh, my slides weren't, I had to uh, restore some of it, so. Um, this is a quote from William Burroughs, uh, I really like it. Um, Anything that can be done chemically can be done by other means. And neurohacking, uh, I would define it as any way of observing or affecting the brain and its processes. Um, it can range from using chemicals or electronic devices to manipulate the brain. Um, so EEGs, uh, this technology lets us see the uh, electrical activity of the brain was created from the firing of neurons. And the information that you get from an EEG can be used to diagnose or treat certain disorders. They can also be used to control uh, computers or video game consoles um, uh, in brain-computer inter interfaces. And uh, the data can also be used in a process called biofeedback or neurofeedback. Um, some people use it to help um, increase their uh, attention or to help focus or relax. Um, some of the earlier uh, forms of neurohacking involved um, stroboscopic light, uh, such as the dream machine, uh, which was um, a spinning disc with a light suspended in it that flickered the light at a certain rate. Um, and you, with an EEG, you could uh, test to see if um, the rate at which the light's blinking was synchronizing to your brain, your brain waves were syncing to that same rate. So, to build an EEG for pretty much less than $75, you, um, there's the Open EEG Project, and they've done a lot of really good things. Um, they have several different uh, versions of equipment, I believe, but most of them cost anywhere from 200 to 400 or, and upwards uh, to build and assemble. So the MindFlex, you can pick up on Amazon or some toy stores for like 50 bucks. And you can use either, um, some uh, people have used uh, our, uh, an Arduino hack, which is what is uh, used here. Um, there's also a Bluetooth uh, version that doesn't require um, USB cable or an Arduino. Um, so here's uh, a look at the differences between the Open EEG project's um, hardware and the MindFlex hack. And I already went over some of that. Uh, so NeuroSky is the company that produces the EEG chip that is in the MindFlex. And it's also in a toy called the Star Wars Force Trainer. And um, there's also another uh, set called the Mindset. It's a little more expensive, but uh, you don't have to hack it to get the access to the data. But um, some uh, researchers uh, in Japan have studied it, and they found that it was uh, superior in some ways to a normal lab. EEG. Um, they uh, have proved that you can measure cognitive load uh, with the NeuroSky EEG chip. Um, and that can be used to diagnose certain diseases like Alzheimer's. 
Um, there's uh, several projects. Uh, some have uh, hacked the MindFlex to make music. Uh, they plug the output um, of the MindFlex into the input on a synthesizer, the, like the pitch control, and you can actually make music with your mind. It's pretty interesting. Um, so the Arduino hack that, I, uh, that you see here uh, was uh, developed by the Frontier Nerds. Um, it, all you need is a, a one mind flex toy that you get, um, three AA batteries, an Arduino USB cable, um, wire, um, and then you need the Arduino brain library and processing. So um, inside the MindFlex, it's not a very complicated um, piece of equipment. Uh, this is a diagram of how the hack works um, and how the uh, how it picks up uh, the signals from the brain. Is there's a metal electrode in the center here, um, and then that picks up the electrical activity, um, goes to a microcontroller, and it, uh, the output that you get with MindFlex, um, you can only get the EEG power band values. You can't get the raw data unless you get the firmware from a mindset and put it on a MindFlex. But you can still do a lot with just the EEG power band data. And so um, what you do with, one of the things you can do with the data from it is use a program that uh, visualizes it, it graphs it out. Um, I'll show you, uh, here's a picture of an action. Um, and the, the program that uh, the brain visualizer was written in processing, um, it's real easy to hack if you want to change it around for your own purposes or change the graphics. Um, now, to interpret the data, you could go to college to learn, you know, if you want to really learn about it. But, um, you can get a pretty good idea of what some of the data is. Uh, there's um, delta rhythms, theta rhythms, alpha, beta, gamma. Um, it also can pick up um, some something they call meditation and attention values. Um, but uh, And a better um, cheap uh, off-the-shelf EEG technology is from a company called Emotive. They uh, released a product called the Epoch. And this uses 14 EEG sensors, which unlike this, which uh, uses uh, one electrode, um, it can uh, probably be used to get 3D uh, maps of the brain. Uh, some people have hacked the uh, wireless encryption, so there's, you could do way more th uh, with this than you could with the MindFlex, but the MindFlex is still uh, pretty valuable, uh, the data that you can get from it. <coughs> so one person I want to talk about um, that has a lot to do with EEG technology is William Gray Walter. He was a neurophysiologist and a robotician. He created some of the first robots, and he created some of the first EEG machines. Um, he also experimented with the effects of stroboscopic light, which, if you see here, um, is a modern version of a stroboscopic uh, brain machine. This one was uh, invented by Mitch Altman. Uh, 
It also uses binaural beats, which um, pulse uh, at the same rate uh, as the light flickers. Um, so the, as I said earlier, the dream machine, which was a predecessor to modern day uh, mind machines, was originally invented by Brian Jason, Ian Somerville, and William S. Burroughs. Um, Brian Jason was an artist, uh, and William S. Burroughs is a famous uh, writer. Um, and their friend, uh, Ian Somerville, who is an electrical engineer, um, gave him some input when making it. Uh, you can see the dream machine there on the left and on the right is um, the, uh, Mitch Altman's modern form of stroboscopic brain uh, machine. There's uh, other types of audio beats besides binaural, which uses stereo um, left and right audio channels to create um, brain waves to generate the brain waves that you are trying to generate. Um, now, uh, some of them, isochronic tones and monaural beats, they don't require stereo. And so you could actually, um, you wouldn't require headphones. Uh, but you can still uh, get EEG data with. Uh, with uh, headphones, it doesn't seem to interfere. So another thing I wanted to talk about today um, was tra transcranial devices. Uh, another uh, project that uh, me and my friend have made is a uh, cranial electrotherapy stimulator. And what this does is it sends between 100 to 1,000 microamps of electricity through the brain. And how you would w work it is you could either plug electrodes onto the end or uh, cotton balls dipped in saline. And what you do is you attach them behind the ears. Originally, back in the 50s and 60s, when this technology was invented, they thought you could, the only way to penetrate the skull was by putting it over the eyes. And you can still do that. Um, it actually creates a stroboscopic effect. Um, but uh, I don't believe they recommend uh, attaching the electrodes over the eyes. Um, behind the ears is the preferred method. Um, other technologies would be transcranial direct current stimulation, uh, RTMS, which is a repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation. Um, it's been called the, the God Helmet. It uses electromagnetic pulses to uh, create changes in the brain. Um, <coughs> there's a, a really exciting new uh, thing which may replace RTMS. It's called uh, transcranial pulsed ultrasound or ultrasonic neuromodulation. And what this does is it uses ultrasonic waves to um, stimulate areas of the brain. And it can stimulate further into the brain and uh, with better resolution um, than RTMS. Uh, the military, uh, DARPA, is developing it. But uh, the technology, I don't believe, is um, beyond what hackers could, could do. Um, there were a project to create um, open source uh, transcranial magnetic simulation devices, open RTMS and open STEM, but I don't believe either project has released a uh, blueprint for hardware or uh, open RTMS and open STEM is the other part. Yeah. So back to uh, the cranial electrotherapy stimulator. Um, it's also been refer referred to as neuroelectric therapy, uh, which is just another name for it. Um, both of these uh, technologies have been 
grandfathered in uh, and are approved by the FDA. They have been used to treat depression, anxiety. Um, it's also uh, been used to treat drug addiction. Um, it boosts levels of endorphin, serotonin, norepinephrine, and um, uh, dopamine. Um, there haven't been any uh, long-term negative effects. Uh, the only short-term negative effects that I've read about or that I've experienced are um, headaches during, uh, well, uh, during the use of it. Um, I also wanted to talk about uh, a little bit of the history of that. Uh, Giovanni Aldini, who was a nephew of Luigi Galvani, he experimented with Gal galvanic head current all the way back in 1794. And uh, there were French, two French researchers who studied um, electrically stimulating the brain uh, back in 1902. But uh, this technology, um, the CES, uh, this primarily didn't get uh, popularized and studied um, until like the 50s um, when the Russians and then eventually the Americans began uh, researching it. It was originally used for, um, to help induce sleep. Well, um, one uh, thing I want to make clear is a lot of people um, mistake this device for electroshock therapy or ECT, electroconvulsive therapy, that this isn't, this is way different. This is like using microamps. That's a lot more powerful. Um, yeah, you won't get seizures while using this. <laughs> ECT causes seizures. <laughs> um, and the, the Schematic uh, is fairly simple. Uh, we just use a hex inverter. Um, I got this from a site called Hack Canada. Um, you can buy the parts for about 10 bucks at an electronics uh, shop. Um, all right, back to the transcranial stimulation. Now, as I said, the two open source projects didn't seem to really produce anything useful. But there is a guy who um, is selling on the internet a version that um, there's one that uses four, um, um, four magnet, uh, electromagnet. Um, and then I believe there's an 8 and 16 model. But uh, there's also software for it. They're pretty much uh, the same thing if you, the 8 and 16 magnet version, I believe. Um, here you can see uh, some of the prototypes for the ultrasonic neuromodulation, um, neurostimulation. Um, and they believe it could be useful for controlling, say, in combat. If a soldier you know, is getting anxiety or he can't concentrate, if they had a small you know, ultrasonic stimulator on their head. You know, people back at a base could monitor the soldiers while they're in the field and try and reduce their anxiety and increase their concentration and attention in the battlefield. But th this is what it's being researched for now at Arizona State University and um, DARPA. But uh, it has a lot of potential in cons consumer with consumer uses. Um, and then other means of hacking the brain um, are research chemicals, botanicals, nootropics, pharmaceuticals. These are older forms of, or more traditional forms of causing changes in the brain. Um, with the ultrasonic neuromodulation, we may be able to uh, more accurately control the which neurons fire and basically control our own minds to any level we want to. Um, there's uh, uh, I wanted to show the 
a little bit about the um, Brain Grapher, the visualizing program. Uh, it gives you um, an output in numbers, and but uh, it converts that into a graph, and um, you can record this, and then you could use that to basically for uh, uh, neurofeedback or biofeedback. 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 Yeah. Same neurofeedback, biofeedback. Yeah. Um, that uh, I have one to credit. Um, the MindFlex hack is uh, was originally made uh, by the Frontier Nerds, um, and uh, the Bluetooth version of the hack, uh, Mog and Tim from Makers Local Two Five Six made that. And um, if anybody's interested, here's the two papers. I, mentioned about um, research into the MindFlex EEG um, technology. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, right now, uh, I mentioned earlier about how um, you could use, uh, with uh, Mitch Altman's uh, mind machine here, and then, uh, it's putting out a flickers of light and uh, binaural beats at a rate that um, is supposed to cause your brain to sync to the same brain wave frequency. And um, with this, uh, you can see patterns. It's a very um, psychedelic type of device. But the interesting thing is um, you, could, you can verify that the device is syncing the brain waves with the actual uh, rate of light and audio. Uh, yes, there, um, there was. Uh, more people have used, I think, the emotive Epoch device for that. But um, the original game that comes with this controls a fan, which uh, levitates a ball. The, um, the mindset, which is the uh, I believe two hundred dollar version of the same chip, uh, it's a head wireless headset which um, you can get apps for, or and you can also make apps. This uh, developer kit's available free of charge by um, NeuroSky. Um, you can uh, there's a lot of games for it, um, also the computer games that you can play and use the thing to control. Yes. What is that called? It's called, the, the program is called Slice. That's I've heard of, um, about um, other technology that uh, uses the brain to control things. I think they can be, re could be really useful um, for, uh, for people that have disabilities, um, multiple sclerosis, and other.
actual computer, you know, like you know, it's more like you try to interface with the human brain, which is say like a computer chip, to where all you do is just plug a cable into your brain and actually have using just by thought. Okay, I want. To there is research. I want to move, and they've uh, had it with. Uh, I know they've had success with uh, some chimpanzees. Yeah, you see Berkeley. Um, yeah, there's some research being done um, on that. That's more a little more invasive because it, uh, it requires actual opening surgery. the skull yeah, and putting uh, EG electrodes over the actual brain. Um, they, there is research being done on that at UC Berkeley, um, but uh, you can kind of do some of the same things with uh, less invasive things. And, uh, I think uh, with uh, the MindFlex, uh, it opens a lot of possibilities. It's very easy to hack, and I encourage a lot more people to try and um, hack their heads. Th thank you.